I'm Owen Bigland. This is the Inside Edge video blog. Okay, time to do a blog here. It's been a few years since I've did this one on bad ideas in Vancouver real estate or dumb decisions in Vancouver real estate. I've done this a few times. If you've read my book, Along for the Ride, I've got a chapter in here on thinking like an investor and some of the mistakes uh, that amateurs make when it comes to investing in real estate or in stocks. Most of it is becoming a speculator as opposed to an investor. Um, but let me review some of these uh, again for people. Some of the bad mistakes or bad ideas people come up with when it comes to Vancouver real estate. And if you want, read the comment section in my YouTube channel here, you'll see that these come up all the time in here. Uh, it's a never ending stream. I think a lot of them are probably new subscribers to my channel and that's understandable. As I've always said to, to a lot of the new people that come to my channel, you know, please take five, six, seven hours, take a few weeks and go into my archives because chances are a lot of the questions or a lot of the ideas you've come, you, you pose to me here, I've talked about many, many times uh, on other videos in the past. I've covered pretty much all the bases in there on investing and buying and holding and indexed investing and the, the advantages of leverage, buying your principal residence, all that good stuff is in my archives. I'm up to over 400 videos in there. But I had, I get this, these ones all the time. There was one just recently, about three weeks ago, guy commented and said, you know, enjoy your channel, great. Hey, listen, I, I bought a detached house in East Vancouver 18 months ago and I'm up 250K. So he's feeling pretty good, why not? He's, he's uh, bought the house and it's worth $250,000 more now. It, timing has been perfect and this is pretty common these days. I've got homes that I was selling last spring that are up well over two hundred dollars or 300000 I've got condos I was selling uh, during the height of COVID that are probably up 50, 60, 80 grand all day. So when that kind of return happens in such a short period of time, a lot of people get, and I'm gonna call it a dumb idea, that hey, maybe I should sell my house. And this guy was talking about, I'm, I'm thinking of selling my detached house, it's his principal residence, and I'm gonna uh, cash in my chips, take my 250,000, well after commissions actually, it's only gonna be about 200, and I'm gonna rent for a year or two and then buy back in because I think the market's pretty frothy right now and maybe he's right, maybe he's wrong though. I think I can get a better buying window in a couple of years. I think the market's headed for a correction now and I'll buy back in cheaper. Now this is, in my opinion, the number one bad idea in real estate and I've talked about it many times. If you've read my book, I call it becoming an amateur Houdini. So those of you that have read my book will know what I'm talking about. Houdini used to have a gag where he used to escape from a locked house in shackles and then get break in back into the house without using a door or a key. And I relate that to this scenario here. I'm gonna sell my principal residence, take the $200,000 I'm up, rent for a couple of years, and then I'm gonna buy back in. I'm gonna time the market perfectly and look like a hero and a, and a genius. Don't do it. It's, it's a bad idea with an investment property, but it's a really bad idea with your playing games with your principal residence. Because just take a look at it here. And I know why it's tempting. You're up 250K in 18 months on the house. It's great, congrats. And, but what I'm telling you is you're, you're playing small ball here as I talk about it in my book. You're playing one or two innings of a nine inning baseball game. And I can tell you that if you play the full game, nine innings or go into extra innings, hold that house for 20 or 25 years if you can, it's gonna make that $250,000 capital gain look like chump change 25 years from now. And remember, all that growth is gonna be tax free to you with the principal residence exemption. So I know it's tempting, but selling the house now, you're gonna have $40,000, $45,000 in real estate commissions. You're gonna have a set of conveyancing fees and now you're gonna have to rent. So if you're in a detached house, I don't know, you're gonna have to rent a townhouse or a two bedroom condo or maybe even another detached house. So you could easily be looking at 40 or $50,000 a year to rent. So let's say you rent for a couple of years. The market doesn't participate in your correction right away, which it probably won't and continues to go up or, or just flat lines out for a couple of years. 
You know, it could be several years before you're able to get back into the market at your strike price. But that strike price, I've done many blogs on timing a market, and it's very difficult to, to pull the trigger in a market that's going down almost impossible for most people unless you're a real savvy experienced buyer so you could be looking at seventy eighty thousand dollars in rent while you're on the sidelines then when you buy back in you're going to have another set of ptt uh, property transfer tax another twenty five thirty forty thousand dollars in ptt depending on what you buy another set of conveyance and moving fees so you can see where that eats away at your returns what I've talked about many times here, real estate is extremely expensive to get in and out of what we call friction costs, taxes, commissions, conveyance and lawyer fees. It's not like getting in and out of a stock where you pay $10 for a trade. And remember, I'm coming, at, I'm telling you this, and this kind of flies in the, it directly in the way I make my living. I'm a listing and marketing realtor. I work with buyer, a lot of buyers too, but the majority of my work is on the listing side. So I'll sell your house if you really want to. And I have many of my clients and many people that come to me every year wanting to sell a house after a couple years. They've made some money on it. I'll sell it if you really want to, but I try and talk them out of it. There's lots of good reasons though to sell. I'm selling 10, 15 homes a year, detached homes, and for, for lots of good reasons. They're downsizing. They're going for, they've owned the house for a long time, they're gonna to go to a condo, or they're gonna to move to the island, or they're gonna to move to the interior. Or maybe someone is upsizing, they're going from a two bedroom condo to their first detached home. Unfortunately, I deal a lot with financial problems, divorces that they have to sell and liquidate. Those are all fine reasons to sell, but trying to get what I call get cute and time a market, take the one inning of returns instead of playing a full, full baseball game, and then renting and then hoping to buy back in and becoming an amateur Houdini, it's probably not gonna work out for you. I go into more detail, buy my book, pay the 10 bucks. I've got some stories in there and I could do a whole other blog here on the horror stories. I've had it personally, I've bought homes. One of my first detached homes I ever bought was from a guy who was playing the Houdini game and it didn't work out, it worked out very bad for him. The only reason I know, normally I would have no interaction with, with the seller but in this case, it had a billiards room and he was leaving a pool table for me and had to come over later to, 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 to give me some billiard uh, 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 accessories. And at that time, we struck up a little conversation and he told me, market's crazy right now. I've decided to sell. I've made some money and I looked it up. He made about 150K on the house in about four years. So he did okay. Peanuts now. And compared to what those homes are priced now at is, is ridiculous. He immediately within two years had permanently priced himself out of the market and he never got back in, I can tell you now, because the homes went on a rocket ride from there, detached. Don't do it. Some of the other bad ideas, bad decisions people make, I just did a blog on it, I've done so many, selling tenanted properties, go back and watch my other blogs on that. As a seller, that's one of the biggest mistakes people make. In some cases, it can be okay. I do sell the odd home here and there with a tenant in it. But for the most part, you are far better off getting the tenant out. There's lots of ways we can do it. I'll educate you on how the Tenancy Act works and how, how we can uh, get your tenant out legally and, uh, and it will always net you far more in the selling price. We're talking twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 on a typical one bedroom condo all day. Next one, I still see a lot of people, uh, and this is, you know, I, you really have to do your homework on this, but I'll see people all the time talking about paying off a mortgage early. Now, on an investment property, this does not make any sense at all. And I hear people talking about it all the time. You know, the whole, the whole benefit with investing in real estate, the big benefit is using the leverage. You're putting 20% down of your own money, borrowing the other 80%, borrowing it at a favorable interest rate, historically low right now, and then letting the tenant do the heavy lifting. All your interest is deductible. So paying something like that off early doesn't make any sense when you're borrowing at 1.82% and it's a deductible expense, let it ride. And even I hear people sometimes saying about paying off the mortgage on a principal residence. Well, again, you've got to do your homework on this. 
I would say that if your mortgage rate is less than 2.53%, let's call it, as a matter of fact, less than 4%, uh, it wouldn't make a whole lot of sense to pay your mortgage off early, especially if you still got room in your RRSP and TFSA. If you still got contribution room in there, you would be far better off maxing those two things out before paying down your mortgage at 2% because you can earn a far better return in those vehicles uh, than 2%. So you got to do your homework on this. this is, I've done several blogs on this in the past, but this is pretty basic stuff that you can go on to Google and learn a lot of this stuff. Uh, but for the most part, it could make sense for someone who is with a crazy third tier lender and is paying six or seven percent mortgage rate, and there are a few of those out there. If that's the case, then for sure, pay that down early if it's at six or seven percent. But if you're paying sub 2.5 or 3 percent, probably be a lot better off investing that excess money before paying your mortgage off. Last couple of things here, the other big mistake people make, and I've harped on this many times before too, is just getting bad advice from people that do not have any transparency. They put themselves out there like they're experts in Vancouver real estate, let's say, and they're not. And they get a lot of bad advice about timing markets, the crash is just around the corner. They listen to these people, they get frozen on the sidelines. You have to be extremely careful about who you're listening to, folks. Uh, this is probably one of the biggest things that kills a lot of people's uh, uh, financial independence. They get uh, sidetracked, they get bogged down, they get confused with all these opinions coming at them from all angles. And unfortunately, most of the opinions they're getting aren't, aren't worth the paper they're written on. And a lot of them, unfortunately, too, or even with some of these mainstream media, I've done so many blogs and had so many dust ups over the years with this. You know, they, it might be coming from a Bloomberg or, or a Vancouver Sun or a province and they're thinking, well, hey, it must have some credibility. And in a lot of cases, it doesn't. A lot of these reporters, I find, have a, have a narrative or an angle they want to push. And usually it's something negative because that's what sells newspapers and gets clicks. It's that the crash is coming, sell now, get out. Optimism and stay the course and buy and hold isn't very exciting. But those are the ones you should be paying attention to. I mean, there's so many, uh, you know, it, it causes people, these articles, to do so many, what I would call bad knee-jerk reactions to things. And just look no further than our last little correction here that we had, or a lot, you know, it, it, with the COVID back in March and April. And I talked about this many times. There were some bad knee-jerk reactions there. People selling condos at fire sale prices because in the media they were saying that COVID is going to kill the city. Everybody's going to move out. Nobody's going to want to live in downtown Vancouver. Crime is going to be rampant. It's going to be like escape from New York. And you're going to have to armor your car and put battering rams to drive around downtown. That was the picture they tried to paint, which turned out to be a, a joke. But I talked about some of those. I probably uh, was representing buyers on probably seven or eight condos between late March and early May that going back now look like we got it at a total bargain. But there was a few that I blogged about. They did, it only lasted two or three weeks, but there were some fire sales out there from people that panicked and sold. I still talk about that one in Olympic Village. It sold in the low 600s. I hope those people are not looking at the MLS because I just saw a, similar units now are selling in the low 700s. I saw one that just sold two days ago in a bidding war for 725. That's $100,000 more than this comparable unit that sold in March with a COVID panic. So be careful with these things. Buy, hold, buy your principal residence. Don't try and time markets. Don't try and get cute, sell and play games with your principal residence. And keep in mind the final thing, you better be careful if you're gonna start playing games with your principal residence and, and buying and selling in short order. Revenue Canada is on the lookout for you guys. First off, you better have lived in that house, forget 12 months, you better have lived in that house, in my opinion, for 15 months before you sell it. And if you do that more than once in the next two or three years, you will get audited and they're not only going to come after you for capital gains tax on the sale, they'll probably tax it at your full marginal rate. Be very careful with doing that. I wouldn't even do it on investment units, but at least there you don't live in it. If you made some money, okay. 
But doing those kind of games on a principal residence and renting and then trying to buy back in or becoming an amateur Houdini, probably a recipe for disaster. Don't waste your time with it. I'm Owen Bigland, as always. I'll see you next week.